Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the bomber number BB5004-600-633. This is the first 6x6 heavyweight hinge from bomber that, oh baby, um, that I have ever, <laughs> that I have ever um, reviewed. So here's the old baby part. Sharing the uh, shock of opening the box. <laughs> Immediately, you're like, wow, that's a big hinge. It's a lot. <laughs> Maybe it's just me that's impressed, I suppose. Look at that. That is noticeably huge and heavy. Weighs about 2.8 pound, whereas a normal hinge literally weighs half of that weight. Normally weighs half. Look at that. What a gorgeous hinge, huh? This is a six by six hinge. This is this is big. Um, first of all, where are you going to use it? Obviously, an exceptionally thick door. Uh, my guess, something like three inch would probably be a decent door size. Two and three quarter, two and a half inch maybe. You know we can kind of talk about the thickness of door just by measuring the hinge leaf. And imagine that over here, over here, I want to have about a quarter inch for the hinge back set. So you can see where the barrel of the knuckle, or the barrel of the hinge is going to come into play. You know, if you increase that typical quarter inch back set to half inch, you can see you can start to approach a three inch door thickness. A five by five hinge is going to be up to about a two and a quarter inch. You start to get bigger than that, two and a half, two and three quarter, you get to your six inch hinges. Uh, there are even larger ones. Um, but you're going to play with that hinge back set, the amount of the door that you don't chisel out. On a normal door, four and a half inch hinge, inch and three quarter door, that's a quarter inch. You try to stuff a five inch hinge onto that, you can make it fit, but you reduce that back set down to zero, basically. You don't want projecting hardware hanging off the door any more than necessary, but the door still needs to operate in the sense of, you know, quarter inch back set. The door still needs to operate in the sense of the hinge uh, barrel not having conflict with the frame. So if your door was um, four inch thick, this would never work um, because you don't have the room to get all that put on unless you really increase that hinge back set. So I would be looking at something two and a half or two and three quarter thick for this type of hinge. You can put it on a thicker door if you want, you're just going to increase that back set. Now, this is a heavyweight hinge and we know that by just how thick the steel is, but also the giveaway is that there are four bearing packets. Okay, so you're going to use this on an unusually thick, unusually heavy door. I've sold these on doors that had five of these hinges on them, and they were epically huge. Um, lots of hinges, lots of heavyweight steel hinges can tame a very heavy door. Um, and that's where you're going to see this, and you don't see them that often. In fact, these hinges are literally going to Asia. And I understand that they're going on to some quite historical uh, woodwork that's been done in a sanctuary. And hope to get a picture when these are installed of those doors. Let's move on. Let's dissect the part number. BB stands for ball bearing. Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory. That's one of the three different types of bearing construction from Bomber. They can do plain bearing, ball bearing, or lube bearing. Lube bearing is what you're going to see on their spring hinges, which are inherently three knuckle hinges, or their three knuckle hinges. The 5004 means a number of things, and I'm just going to throw them at you as they come to mind. It means that it's a full mortise hinge. You can see from the swag on the hinge leaf here that when the leaves are brought parallel, they're meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and frame. So you have that gap between the door and frame. Okay, not full surface, not half surface, they're full mortise. It means that it's heavyweight. The four in the part number sure means that. And that means on a six by six, I'm going to guess that this is about 205 thousandths thick. I, I, don't, I don't know, but let's put the caliper on there and 
see what it tells us. It's down below. I just didn't look at it. Uh, oh, he's good. Two, yeah, I probably knew that in my subconscious. 0 0.205 is the leaf thickness. A heavyweight 5x5 five five would be 190 thousandths. A heavyweight 4.5 four four would be 180 thousandths. This is 205. It also means that it is 5 knuckle. That's also obvious why it's 5 knuckle. It means it's steel based. That's also inferred in the 633 part of the part number, and we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, and that's, I think, everything that is inferred there. The 6 by the 600 means this is a 6 by 6 hinge. The height is the first dimension. The width is the second dimension. When you have a 6 by 6 hinge, don't really matter, it's square, I guess. But if you had a 6 by 5, which could be a common hinge, if you had a two and a quarter inch exceptionally heavy door you would go with a five wide and you can go with a six tall because the extra height significantly increases the hinges ability to hold weight don't quote me but i would say that the difference between a five and a four and a half or a six and a five is probably in the 25 percent range increased capability so yeah you'd want a six by five um or imagine if you had a wide throw imagine if this was a five by eight Okay, you really want to know that the height is the first dimension. Why? Well, you're going to tell your, your installer, if you're doing four and a half by four inch hinges, that the height has to be four and a half when he preps the aluminum door and frame for the hinges. Because four and a half by four is a very common aluminum hinge. Anyway, height's the first dimension. 633, that means three things. As I demonstrated earlier with that magnet, it's made of steel. It's satin brass, and that it has a lacquer on it. Okay, very nice, very faithful finish. They do a reasonably good job on the backside as well. Not fully, but you'll never see that naturally. Now, there is information down below this video. Uh, what we've not covered is non-rising removable pin hinge. You can drive that pin out should you want to. If you want to install that or you're flipping it over, pulling the pin out, you can. The knurling that's done on the pin there, that prevents it from rising over time open close open close open close the pin seems to creep out a little bit because all the weights pushing it like you're you know pulling pushing to uh, toothpaste out of a tube makes the pin come out that knurling keeps that set down there this is a button tip hinge if you imagine the button on your trench coat that's what it looks like you can do decorative tips on this you can do an acorn tip you can do a ball tip you can do a steeple tip. You can do decorative tips on this, and that's not unusual either. If you have an ornate door like where these are going, having a ball tip is not that unusual. You can do uh, a hospital tip as well where they're literally going to grind. You wouldn't see it on this hinge uh, so much, but they will grind all this down, and it's uh, ligature resistant is the purpose of a uh, hospital tip. You can do security features on this. You can certainly do a non-removable pin where in the barrel there is drilled and tapped a hole for a set screw. That in the pin itself there is a groove cut into it so that the set screw seats into that groove preventing it, uh, preventing the pin from coming out. And take it from me, it's basically impossible to do that under reasonable circumstances. I've tried. You can also do a security stud where there's going to be a preparation in the leaf like a hole and then a piece of metal here so that when it closes well, you might be able to drive the pin out, but the leaves still won't separate. You can do a combination of both of those items as well. There is a link below this video to the, before we get to the cut sheet, you can do radius corners. You want quarter inch radius, five eighths radius, incredibly unusual, but nonetheless, I've done five by five hinges with a five eighths radius heavyweight. I've done it before. It can be done. Now that link to the document called cut sheet, that's going to give you all of the dimensional properties of the six by four and a half, six by five, six by six. It's going to refer to three columns. Notice the four in the part number, steel, five brass, bronze, depending on what the material, uh, what the finish is. Six is stainless. So your base material changes as that last digit changes. You change the BB to the LB. Now you're going to get a three knuckle hinge which is really attractive, with just two seams, and then they have a very high-performance lube-bearing construction that significantly reduces friction, giving you a long-lasting hinge. What's really important, though, is to see where the screw hole are located 
Um, don't assume this is going to work where you uh, have an existing hinge. You might need to dowel those hinges, drill the holes out, put some wood, glue it, chisel it down flat, re-drill your holes. And speaking of those holes, screws are included in a complementary finish. Now be absolutely mindful. These are all wood screws. The client specifically said all wood screws are AWS. If you need machine screws, AMS, specify in the comment field what you want. I need half wood, I need half machine screws. I can't, I've never seen a hollow metal frame take a six by six hinge and I couldn't fathom why you need machine screws unless you had a real custom scenario. But specify it, otherwise you're probably gonna get all wood screws with this hinge. Knowing where the screws are located, the holes are located will help you know up front what you're dealing with. This hinge is available in different finishes. 600 is a prime coat, gray primer. 632, polished brass. 633, satin brass. 639, satin bronze. 640 is an oil rubbed bronze. You can do an antique, what they call satin bronze blackened. 643 finish, like an antique bronze. 651, polished chrome. 652, satin chrome. They can do satin nickel. They can do antique nickel. They can do other stuff. They can do black Japan. They can do zinc. Um, but those eight finishes or so are what's listed in the site. If you, uh, site. If you have need for something else, let us know. Um, other than that, the last thing I'd like to point out to you would be the logo. Right above it, it says Made in USA, a fact that Bomber is quite proud of, as am I to represent them. If you have any questions on the Bomber, BB5004-600-633, heavyweight, 6x6, ball-bearing hinge, or any other Bomber product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.